Hello, my name is Carol May Wittick, spiritual life coach and your host of Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on earth today, reclaiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal, but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on her conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories and hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. Before we go deeper into this episode, let me share with you some ways that I can support you. Firstly, tune into her Inspirations, which is the sister podcast to this title, where in each episode I explore with you a different aspect of our spiritual and creative journeys. Also, if you join the mailing list, you'll receive emails with additional teaching points and resources for you to explore deeper on your own personal journey. At the moment, I'm into week three of a series on creativity. So if you're looking to expand your own creativity or meet your own creativity, meet me over on Her Inspirations. Also, if you're someone who has always wanted to be heard, so whether that means you're launching your own podcast, social media content, public speaking, or simply wanting to show up in a bigger way in your own life, I've created your Awakened Voice for you, which is my course using a holistic approach that acknowledges the intricate connection between your physical body mind and spirit this course empowers you to discover and develop your voice or you may choose to work with me one-to-one and this is especially for you conscious creators if you know there's a purpose to your life my purpose is to support you to confidently follow your intuition and create your big vision in your life the links to all of these are in the show notes My guest this week is Lisa Tahir, a licensed clinical social worker, thought coach, podcaster, and also the author of The Chiron Effect, Healing Our Core Wounds Through Astrology, Empathy, and Self-Forgiveness. During our conversation, Lisa reveals how to use the astrological placement of the minor planet Chiron in the birth chart to identify the core wounds and unconscious patterns that block our capacity to have self-empathy and to forgive. So as always, I begin by asking my guest, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel that Higher Energetic Resonance? Carol May, I feel it right now sitting with you as we begin this time together feeling i'm feeling very centered and calm and connected and i meditated before coming on the call with you so i feel that real alignment and and connection and excitement and uh unknown exactly what will come forward and through us but knowing it'll be really wonderful so i feel it now in this time with you, I, I feel that higher inner energetic resonance when I meditate. And it might not be every single time that I hit that sweet spot of real neutrality and real like like a bliss in connection to everything and everyone that is. But when it happens, it's just so delightful. And there are other times I feel that higher energetic resonance after a wonderful workout where I know I've just really pushed myself and feel so deeply gratified and as well in nature, just walking and really noticing the trees, the flowers, people. So those are the settings where I tend to feel that higher energetic resonance. And before we go deeper into our conversation, I'd just like to give you an opportunity to just to tell something about your life, your story, what got you to doing the work that you're doing now for the world. Yeah, it makes me really so happy and deeply gratified living my meaning, my purpose to help people, to help people heal emotional vulnerabilities and woundings and these thought patterns that came from experiences earlier on in our lives where we made meaning about ourselves and and typically not 
we're not consciously aware that when something happens, it's like a pivot point and we make a decision about ourselves, what's possible and true for us and what's not. And it sets us on a trajectory of our lives to live as far as we can go. Our largest limiting belief is as far as we can go. And when that became so clear to me, I just made it my mission to help myself and others clear the, up those thought patterns that limit us in any way to really start to feel our unlimitedness. And, and since we're unlimited, how far can we go? How large can we live? What do we really want? And using our imagination to, to feel that, to think that. And then from that place, taking inspired actions in our lives, those baby steps and really feeling more joy in our life experience and our expansion than anything else. One of the things as well, I've had the opportunity to read your book, The Current Effect, and I'd love for you to really delve into what what got you what got you attracted to astrology and then Chiron in particular and why did you kind of take that angle and really um study that and then create this work as well because I've you know thank you had the opportunity to read the book so it's been great as well to look at it from a point of view of learning about you but then also learning about myself and I was you know, yes when I looked at my own um my own placement as well there was so much that resonated there on you know the 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 things that we could say are the kind of negative parts but the experiences that got us um there that resonated with me and then also things to uh learn and overcome and, and transcend to kind of be and you know there was so much that I could say yep that's me um but how did you get there what was what was the draw for you thank you Carol May the, the draw for me was to answer the question, why is it that many of my clients who are successful, they're wonderful, they have so much going on that, that's working well in their lives, why are they still experiencing anxiety and depression? And why, why was I? experiencing anxiety and depression, having been in therapy as a client for most of my life, being a therapist for over 25 years, and at that time, over 20 years, and just asking the universe, what's going on here? And as I sat in meditation to receive anything that, that would be an answer, I just started hearing very gently the word Chiron, C-H-I-R-O-N. And I wasn't very moved, Carol May. It, I, I was expecting something more radical, something more like, aha, this is it. Like, But this Chiron, I, I ignored it at first, thinking this isn't what I'm looking for. As how many times do we do that? We ask a question, the answer comes, and it's like, oh, no, that, that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of in a humorous light, the universe just kept bringing it up for me in different ways. Chiron, and I know enough about this process of life and of spirit and the universe to, okay, I'm just going to listen. I'm just going to, I'm going to take some time to Google Chiron because all that I had remembered about Chiron is in the work of Carl Jung. He wrote about the archetypes and Chiron is this wounded healer archetype, a mythological archetype. And when I started to just Google Chiron, I learned so many cool things that Chiron in astronomy is actually a heavenly body in our solar system. In astronomy, Chiron is both a minor planet and a comet. And it was the first heavenly body discovered in 1974, I believe, to have an odd elliptical orbit between the planets of Saturn and Uranus, and the astronomer Charles Cowell that discovered Chiron named this elliptical orbiting minor planet and comet Chiron because Chiron was the Greek mythological centaur of the healing arts. So astronomy was then tied to Greek mythology. Chiron tutored Asclepius, the founding father of medicine and botany and of therapy. And when you go to the doctor and you see the staff of Asclepius, the staff with the two snakes intertwined, Chiron actually gave that staff to Asclepius to really denote modern medicine. So again, I thought, okay, this is really cool. How does this answer though, 
what what's missing in turning over every rock, every stone to really get under those parts of ourselves where we feel vulnerable, where we might lack confidence despite having personal success and really accomplishment, true accomplishment, and yet feeling inadequate and not good enough. I was looking for that answer. And that's when I was led to Chiron in astrology is a placement in our astrological birth charts. Just like you know your sun sign. Like what is your sun sign, Carol May? Um I'm Scorpio. Scorpio, okay. And most everyone knows that. In conversation, we know like I'm a Gemini, you're a Scorpio. And Chiron is also in one of these astrological signs. Chiron is in Aries or Libra or Sagittarius or Pisces. And it's different from your sun sign. And what this placement reveals, which was the answer to my question, using astrology as a diagnostic point, is this placement of Chiron reveals the area of our personality or in our lives where we, it's a spectrum of vulnerability. It might be like an ouch. You know, you might be like, ooh, like I don't really want to go there. I don't feel a lot, a lot of confidence here in this area of my life. So we might kind of hide it and cover it over and really overperform in other areas to compensate. But it really takes us farther away from our truest selves because we're not really diving in to this area of where we feel vulnerability. And it might show up as feeling really disconnected from your creative creativity. So you throw yourself into helping others and their creativity. So you're kind of, you're, you're illuminating an aspect of that for others, but neglecting doing it for yourself when that's, what's really going to make your heart sing as an example. And I know for you and your Chiron placement in the sign of Aries, having to do with this vulnerability. And I have a placement as well of Chiron and Aries of, of our self-worth. And it's this real personal thing, feeling like we might lack value or worth. So we might over give, we might overperform thinking that that's how we're going to derive feeling like we're good enough, but it ends up leaving us feeling depleted. And for you, this manifests in the ninth house and the ninth, there are 12 houses of the Zodiac. And this ninth house for you has to do with issues of politics, religion, spirituality, foreign travel, higher education, and your life philosophy. So it's really about embracing your life philosophy, even if it sounds and feels and looks different than your family, than your your friends. You know, it might be this real like uh, out there philosophy, but it really resonates for you. And it's the key to your success and your work. And I feel like you've been doing that through your higher energetic resonance conversations, your podcast. And it's really a confirmation, Carol May, to fully embrace this in your life. And when you feel like your confidence might dip, you know, to really affirm that this is your way, this is your path through life. And we all have a different path through life. And I think it's truly through embracing that and honoring it and gaining the confidence to live it and speak it, even if it's just to ourselves. We don't need to convince anyone otherwise. Like that's not our job, but it's to really convince ourselves. So I'm going to pause. How does that land with you? To, to respond to what you said, yes, especially when it comes to the, the aspect of um, kind of people pleasing and giving, you know, do the dance, basically. You would think I would have like caught on to the fact that like giving and giving and giving doesn't necessarily always get you back in return what you want. And often right. all of that giving um divert one diverts your attention away from yourself or let me speak in, in in the first person diverts the attention away from myself even recently I've had an experience of this where someone asked me to do something and I thought yeah I can I can kind of squeeze that in it's just going to take an hour or so it turned out as always that things always take a little bit longer I don't do mates rates anymore and someone came and really wanted me to do something there and then you know and I did as much as I could and then it was kind of taking a bit longer and then also one of the things that that I needed to do was like in order to make sure this doesn't happen I just mm -hmm. need to state that 
in the future if you do because they kind of said oh well you know and then you know down the line when I've got some money I'll help you out and I was just like I'm not cool with that so then I just politely said you know the next time you need me to do something I'm fine with that but if you're gonna have a little bit of a problem compensating me for the work I do just kind of let me know up front that's all the response to that was not really what I was expecting you know and then I just kind of messaged back and went if you listen back to my message I never said any of the things or insinuated any of the things all I was doing was saying going forward can we do it this way the, the effect that it had just kind of showed me where um, I think like like people say, like when you kind of start putting a boundary and people react to your boundary, you see how beforehand they were, whether consciously or unconsciously, right. benefiting from you not having those boundaries. It's then really highlighting to me where all of this overgiving, you know, it's not really going to work, especially if I want to have more honest conversations, you know, because I realize yeah. I've let a lot of things slide and not had the conversations simply because I've not stood up or put a boundary up or a hand up to say yes. this, is, this is where I want. So hear what I'm trying to say, not what you think I'm accusing you of, because there was no accusation there. That was an interesting point to see how that corresponds with what you'd written about the placement for me the question that I wanted to ask you is is like our birth chart our Chiron kind of predetermined you know we kind of no not at all and Carol my this is the biggest download for me when I had this illumination just in the last couple of years after my book had already been out I had been speaking about it and I had always felt a little twisted up about hey universe like my birth chart are you saying uh, I've thought of astrology and I still do as a blueprint of the stars the planets the heavenly bodies in the sky this beautiful map uh, that that can help us understand ourselves and I had this huge download Lisa you wrote your birth chart so did everyone else it's not prescribed to you you created it you wrote this and it was like I felt like boom something like exploded out of me that had been a barrier so you wrote your own birth chart and and I'm sure there's some people that have a recollection of before they they came into their physical body I don't remember that clearly but we had certain things we wanted to experience and and that's reflected in in a birth chart that's reflected in the life you're living And yet the greatest news is that we have free will, we have the ability to learn, to become who we want to be. It's not prescribed to us at all. It's just a matter of some some of us might need to learn the skills to have healthier relationships, to create more, to create and receive more income, to be a bigger presence in life, that we might have to learn skills that we didn't get in our childhoods, and that's okay. We're in this information age where you can go to therapy face-to-face, you can do virtual sessions, you can read books, you can take seminars. There's so many ways to learn and to heal and to grow and become exactly who you want to be. So that to me is really exciting. Mm, mm, love it love it and what would you say is the the biggest revelation revelation or realization with doing this work that you were just like okay I didn't yeah. expect that to to show up in in all of this or about Chiron it really confirmed Carol May that uh, for me that before I knew about intuition and how we're we're being led every day through our day through our lives through those those emotional those things you just know about people places and things and and life tends to train us away to use our rational mind instead of our our true like our gut that gut knowing of people places and things and this work writing my book and teaching people about Chiron and how your vulnerabilities are such gifts because there's information when you feel emotional pain or confusion instead of shying away from it and trying to shut that down as quickly as you can pause and ask what does this what does this emotion want me to know whether it be anxiety or anger or fear or or like 
shame or if you can just pause and take some time out from talking about it and just being with it, taking out a journal. I lead you through some journal prompts in my book early on. Like, what does this want me to know? Because it's all here to help you. Every emotion, every experience is actually leading you to who you most want to be and what you most want. And you can learn to start to learn through through joy, through happiness, instead of pain, instead of trauma. Because if you start listening to yourself, you know, you're going to know very clearly where to go and where not to go, who to join and connect with and who not to. And it's really this beautiful kind of invisible guidance that comes to you comes to us through our emotions and that's been the most exciting thing is when we listen when we pause and listen we can make our lives so much easier i wanted to ask because when when we talk about the the wider charts there's always an element of compatibility you know these are the people that that you'll sit with these you know all of that does that line up with having current placements is it better to be around people with certain placements to help your own evolution or that may stifle your own growth or anything like that how does that play in if if you've got a placement somewhere and somebody yeah. else has a placement somewhere else that's a beautiful question because it really speaks to a section of my book where i talk about emotional reactivity versus responding like like responding instead of being reactive and that speaks to our triggers and a trigger i define in our book an emotional trigger i see it as like an unhealed energetic attachment that say for example if you experience chiron and taurus core wounding by neglect and you might have been neglected by a parent a caretaker uh because they might have had an addiction and their primary relationship was their addiction. So you had to kind of fend for yourself. And so you you grow up, you're in your adult life. It's like, oh, OK, I made it out of that. And, and feeling like, OK, life, here we are. And you might be attracting friends or even a romantic partner that they might neglect you in some way, your deepest need. And it's like, oh, you might you very well might feel angry when that happens. And the real life lesson in the healing is that we do attract people to help us heal those deepest wounds. And it might not feel like that in the moment. It might feel angering. It might feel very sad. It might feel isolating. But if we can stop blaming the person for a moment and really look at the dynamic that's emerging. And it's beautiful when two people can speak about these wounds that are rubbing up against each other, creating friction. And if if you can both pause and be like, hey, we're, we're triggering each other here. Let's take a deeper look at where that comes from. Like in my life, I, I experienced neglect and it was so painful. And when when I feel neglected by you, it really triggers that. And and what's coming up for you? And maybe for that other person, they they had a parent that was very needy, that really needed a lot from them. And it was overwhelming. And so they might perceive the person who was neglected is having a neediness, a desire for closeness that might rub up against like that person's desire for autonomy. And if you can really unravel that together and develop communication to handle it, like, okay, let's help each other heal this. Like when you need some space, you know, how can you let me know? So I'm not feeling neglected. I know that you need some time and I can go nurture myself. Do you see how that can work? And really beautifully help you. But that takes a lot of self-awareness. We're talking high self-awareness here coming into play where we're not blaming or shaming. We really want to grow and we really want to help the other person. So it really is a lot of self-awareness and, and self-accountability which I think can be exciting to really have that shared experience of healing and helping so that that wound really is eliminated. Then it becomes like, there's not that trigger anymore. It's like you each grow individually and you grow collectively. And you can do that in friendships in business relationships and romantic relationships when the, both people are available. And I think it's so beautiful. 
yeah, that that would be the the most desirous outcome, really, to sit down and and have those conscious conversations where you know yourself and you know the things that will likely set you off, and then be able to. I mean, there's a number of things really, but then then be able to one, you recognize it in yourself, then be able to recognize how the other person's presence or behavior, you know, consciously or unconsciously is then really creating something within yourself, but then also being able to verbalize it in a way that you're heard. Because like, you know, there are so many things that can go wrong. With my own recent experience, I thought I was just being clear, but somebody had completely different things. You hit a trigger within them and you were Mm. clear. And I think sometimes with some time, sometimes some time needs to elapse between people that it, you brought it to as much completion as it could have in the moment mm-hmm. that you described to us and to allow some time to pass. And sometimes that helps people awaken to uh, maybe I need to look at this area of my life and how this pattern is playing out and and clean that up. And they might come back to you at some point and thank you even. And, you know, and, and then maybe not. But but the truth is that you did the very best to raise this energetic resonance between you and clear up your side of the street because it doesn't serve you anymore to mm-hmm. act in that way that depletes you. And, you know, uh, it's wonderful you were able to do that and have that conversation from your own experience and your own work as well outside of this what are the things that people can do to develop awareness around what it is that kind of rankles them about someone else's behavior or what they're not seeing in themselves and then formulate compassionate conversation basically to to be able to go to someone and go this is how I'm feeling this is what I want to this is what I want to say about it yeah. so that it doesn't sound like blame because sometimes in the heat of the moment, you want to go there, you know, you want to lash of out. Of course. First and foremost, it takes self-reflection. I used to struggle with sending text messages that were very reactive when I felt triggered and it would alienate me from the people and, you know, I'd want to be closest to. So I've learned to send a text message to myself first when Mm -hmm. I feel activated as if it was the person, send the whole thing. And like 99% of the time, not all of that needs to be said. So Mm -hmm. I encourage really like text yourself first. And then from that initial, like just like from your gut, letting it all out, you know, kind of cut down and edit what of this really is important for me to communicate to the person and then do another text to yourself and then keep doing it until you really get to the the core of it. And this happened for me in a friendship I had had with somebody for over 30 years. She was like a sister. And I, I realized there had been a pattern through almost our whole friendship of, of me kind of allowing myself to be the butt of the jokes. And when we were 19 and 20, it felt funny. It was like funny. I didn't mind. But as I've grown and evolved and really like evolve my confidence and and just it doesn't feel good anymore for me to be the one being criticized for humor. And and I sat for a long time, like how to share this with this person and getting down to where I just wanted to let her know, hey, I wonder how I can help make our friendship better because when some of the jokes you share and I'm the the butt of the joke like it doesn't feel good anymore and i know we connected in that way in our 20s here we are in our 50s and like i'd really love to evolve this because like i don't like it it doesn't feel good it feels kind of like bullying and and you know and and i she didn't receive it well and um didn't want to go there and said actually i feel like this friendship has come to its end and and that was very shocking for me and and sad at the moment because that's not what I saw. And yet I felt really proud for communicating with as much love as I could. And there was a moment where we both started blaming each other. And I said, you know what, let's just pause. This is not how I want. I don't want to be in my trigger reacting and and criticizing you. That's not at all how I feel. I just wanted to see if we could change this pattern. And I hear that that's not something you want to do. So maybe we can just like 
take a pause. And then we just ended the call and haven't spoken since. And I still send love to that friendship because I feel like it, it just went as far as it could. And I took a year to grieve and really honor this this sister and of a friend that I had. And since then, I've actually felt better, you know, that I was able to to like speak my truth and be out of this dynamic that caused me to feel bad and less than. And I feel happy, like I feel happier having gone through that, though it went a different way than I hoped. And I'm sharing all this because sometime when we really have the confidence to share and have these hard conversations, it might cause what looks like an ending, but we're always connected forever. Like though we might not be speaking right now, our hearts are connected, our energy is connected. You can absolutely, as I do, send love and blessings and who knows, maybe down the road we reconnect and it's it's what I hope and want it to be, but life is gonna bring you other people then and even old people back into your life, you know, your lives. We're never gonna be alone and without if we just kind of trust and allow the changes, I just felt so proud for being able to have that conversation. Yeah, I, I, I hear so much mirrored in my own experience by what you say there, because there's been, um, if I'm thinking about the situation that I outlined before, that instance wasn't the first instance where I've been like I can feel that we're moving in different directions there have been multiple things where I'm like I'm I'm noticing a shift within me and again it's not just someone I met five minutes ago sometimes you hold on because you've got that history but then there is a, a point where you're you're feeling that you're changing from the dynamic and if the dynamic can't shift um, in order for you to go where you feel that you're led to and want to into, um, you can't p keep playing in this game, you know, right. and, and that's, and that's, you know, what I've been feeling for, you know, a fair while. There was never an instance where it was necessary for me to go, Hey, hold up. This is wrong. It was just right. like things that I would hear. And I'd be like, I don't know if I feel that way anymore, but it wasn't mm -hmm. an important enough thing for me to flag up and go, mm, I, I don't think that at all. But but being more being more in awareness, being more in. Let me just pay attention to yes. That when when I hear something, and part of me goes, you know, yes, that's an in, that's your intuition. Yeah, that that I'm seeing this, but I'm like, but am I just going to kind of like cut things dead because of this little, you know, because it's it's happening over and over again where I'm like, I just I can really feel things kind of like you know splitting between us as we are without any kind of conversation you know but when it came to something where I I had a I want to say right but it was it was necessary for me to say something in a in a more overt way then it kind of brought up stuff and I'm like okay this reaction to what I've said is just basically indicative of all the things that I felt going along that there was yes you know, that someone's still caught in a space within themselves and it's not just about me it's about how I see that they are responding to things that are happening in their life that I, I can't meet them with because right. you know, they have to go through their own journey so yeah. I don't know clearly what's going to happen I'm going somewhere and I'm needing yes. different relationships around me and either the relationships evolve or like you say they they kind of you know politely uncouple themselves at that point and they're completed I don't know what that means for that situation at the moment but I know that things have to change because otherwise yeah. I'll be playing along with something that I'm no longer aligned to kind of got to the point now where it's so uncomfortable for me to not honor what I'm seeing for where I go that I can't play one of the relationships and had this conversation with someone else before that is very um is unspoken and and I think needs a lot more um uh discovery and kind of a, about it is the the dynamic of the female friendship we talk about our relationships with our mothers with our children with our with our significant partner um but we never really investigate the dynamic and the evolution of female friendships because like you say the friendships that we the the reasons that we connect to our longer term friends especially you know i've had friends that i we were 20 and, and it was all good and we did all the things but yeah then over time you know as a woman you then kind of move into your 20s and 30s and 40s and you make decisions within your mind as to what that new stage of your life is going to be and how you're going to show up in the world and yeah. sometimes 
playing the 20 year old you with that dynamic just can't cut it's not possible to do so but then there's so much connection between the two of you um that it's it's painful I think probably even more painful than than a family because you chose that person and they met you at a time where it was innocent and it was fun but now you mm-hmm. want deeper and it doesn't mean that you don't want fun but you want but authenticity also- yeah and there's a lot more I'm so happy to see there's so many more books and and things out there about female friendships I know I've spoken a lot of people I've had on my podcast have have speak to this so you can google and there's so much more out there to help it's really honored and recognized is significant now yeah yeah because i think we i think more as well you you may or may not agree with this is as um as women are really kind of claiming this uh this this new phase of their life um you know like for me moving into my 50s and seeing okay what's this midlife going to mean for me how am i yeah. going to take on all of the things that i've learned and not fade away because especially in society as it is usually it's you kind of cross that threshold and like you know just go and tuck yourself away yeah <laughs> and now we're not sure sh- now we're not doing that anymore we're like no this is a new phase and we're stronger and we're more in our power than ever before and we're owning all of the experiences that we've had and then yeah. that not only informs the way that we show up in the world but like of those around us especially if your um sister friends are not choosing to grow in that way you know or they're not mm-hmm. seeing the the power within themselves it's kind of hard if they don't choose that you know so mm-hmm. why do we think that life should be easy we we don't really appreciate the the ebbs and flows or there's this idea that it should all be plain sailing i mean now like if you're on a um on a path of growth then you get to a point where you you appreciate all of the experiences but for the majority of people it's it's not really something that is embraced in in fact all of these kind of pain points and things that happen uh, tend to be seen as like the worst possible case and some of them are really you know horrible like you know job losses bereavement um divorce death all of these kind of things are really tough lessons but they're so transformative and yet we don't appreciate them going in what do you have any like idea? i do i have yes yeah, so i'm i'm a student and i love abraham hicks the work of abraham hicks and mm-hmm. i have shifted my perspective from learning through pain to learning through ease through joy and i am one i have fully embraced an easy life and we're not taught that we can have that. And so my meditations, my thoughts, my, we think up to 70,000 thoughts every day. And Mm -hmm. though we're not aware of, we couldn't be aware of all of those, the ones that we are aware, I, Carol May, like I really curate, cultivate ease and flow and joy and abundance and bliss and love. And like, I spend my days in my mind really like training my mind in that direction because I do believe and I want people to know that it can be so much easier than you've ever been taught. That is what the universe and spirit wants. They want to aid, assist, guide, help. And it's all the junk of of that was human made that it has to be struggle and all this stuff because when you give up the resistance and you really start to align with what's my path of ease and flow it starts to show up and often at first maybe a trickle might be as much as you can let in and that's okay but to open that channel to really allow the ease and the power of this universe and and of life to aid and assist. So I am so happy to be have shifted my life to to ease and flow and I want more of that and I want to help people really understand and embrace that. So how can we embrace the ease and the flow even when the challenging issues and and events happening in our life? Exactly as I just shared my process, it's through your thoughts mm-hmm. that our thoughts are the most powerful 
thing that we have. Our imaginations are the most powerful tool that we have. And instead of just accepting every thought of it's been like this, so it's going to be like this. No, full stop. I release that thought of though I've experienced this in the past, I can choose new thoughts and I choose to have a thought of allowing learning what I need to learn for my life to have more ease and flow. I want to be about that. And then notice what starts popping up in your emails, coming across your desk, conversation, books, people, things. It starts to show up. The answer is when it's like, I want to learn a new and different way about my life and to take even a 30 day experiment to really, really release these fear based and negative thoughts and identify instead what you want. I have affirmations in my book for every placement of Chiron to start to embrace new thoughts that you've never even thought about your life. It takes thinking things you've never thought to have a life you haven't lived yet. And that starts to take material form and life will bring you individualized things that you need to know and want to know. Just trust it, start it and see what happens in 30 days. Well, thank you for that perspective. And where do you envisage your work taking you with this and all of the other things that you're doing? What what are you creating for yourself? Exactly this, Carol May, like speaking with you in the UK and, and being able to speak with others around the world. I, I'm just so honored and and humbled and excited by being able to reach people and on how you can really heal and have more happiness and and you can change you can change what you're living to be more and more desirable progressively by really having thoughts of love and kindness for yourself. And then that extends to others. The way you're able to treat others changes naturally when you start treating yourself with more loving kindness. And I see that more and more just unfolding in my life. I'm not sure, but I know it's going to be good. And I just allow for the universe to surprise and delight me. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your own podcast as well. So tell us a little bit more about your podcast. Thank you, Carol May. I've done all things therapy. This month, March is eight years of weekly episodes. And it's really changed my life to meet people that I never would have met and have conversations like we're having that my mission is to change our consciousness one conversation at a time, change our awareness, change your mind your to open it to what can really be for you and just sharing thoughts and you know take it or leave it there's so many ways that people think and believe and i just want to bring that to the world it's been so wonderful so so where can people reach out to you and and find you for your work and and to work along yeah i would love i would love to connect with you on social media i'm i'm most active on instagram i try to have my social media be really authentic and really like posting when I truly feel motivated. And so that I'm on Instagram at NOLA therapy, N O L A like new Orleans, Los Angeles therapy, T H E R A P Y. I live in both new Orleans and Los Angeles. So NOLA therapy is my Instagram. I have my podcast on YouTube at NOLA therapy and my book. You can order it anywhere. Just Google Lisa Tahir, my name, and it will come up. And I have an audio version where it's my voice reading to you. And there's a meditation in there that I guide you through. And that's on Audible, wherever you can find audio books. And I just love to connect. So please do reach out. My website is also nolatherapy.com where you can email me, do sessions. And Carol May, if anyone mentions your podcast or you, I'd love to offer 50% off. A session's usually $190. So I'll meet with you for a first time, new client for $95 instead. And we can explore your Chiron or anything else important to you. That's perfect. And thank you for that offering as well. And like I said, I learned so much by reading your book. So I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to, I'd love to have you on my show when your book comes out. I'm excited about that for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing with me. And thank you for listening. You can find out more about me on my website, which is carolmaywittick.com. C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. 
You can also find me on LinkedIn and Facebook under Carol May Wittick and Instagram Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K. Until the next episode, have a great week. Take care. Thank you. Bye.